Maven Bertrand. Yes. Equivalence between typed and untyped algorithmic conversion. Your title was much more colorful in the program, but I <laughs> something with a hen, but please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, hello everyone. So, as, as title says, I want kind of to look at the conversion algorithms uh, rather than, so we've seen a lot of, of type systems kind of um, on the more theoretical side. And the thing that I want to look at is how these uh, uh, things relate more on the more um, structured and algorithmic side. I'll talk about this in a, in a second. So I want to kind of relate all kinds of conversion and conversion algorithms all around the place. So I start by giving a bit of an, uh, of an overview of the, of the setting here. And so there are actually um, four kinds of things I'm interested in. I have kind of two directions. And the first one is this typed versus untyped conversion. So there are kind of two traditions around here in dependently typed setting. We have the, the MLTT tradition, let's say, where you have uh, uh, this typing, this typed conversion judgments. Uh, and then you have the other setting, which is more like the, the pure type system setting, where usually you have more of a, an untyped uh, conversion judgment. And they both have their advantages. The, the typed system has, I think, a kind of a better story for etalos when you start adding more type constructors, while in the untyped setting, it's a bit more, more subtle. Uh, but the n-typed one kind of gives you more efficient algorithms because then you don't have to maintain types in your algorithms. So of course that's one less thing to care about. Uh, and for instance, that's what's used in uh, in, in Coq, for instance. Um, and the second direction I want to look at, it's maybe one that's less uh, known or, or, or looked at, is that uh, usually the type systems we have, they have this kind of uh, declarative flavor in that conversion in the sense that it's uh, not that it does not translate directly to an algorithm. And for instance, you have usually this transitivity rule, which is very dirty from an algorithmic point of view, because like you can have a middle point that comes out of the out, out of nowhere, and you have no way to control that thing. And on the other side, you have these uh, more algorithmic presentations that are kind of designed to be easy to relate to an algorithm, but they're not very good specifications because then they have to drop all these like transitivity or reflexivity rules that of course we want to have in a, in a, in a kind of high level uh, specification. And so uh, in the end, kind of the picture looks, looks like this. You have these this four corners, the like two by two directions, and then there are already quite a few uh, work trying to tackle how we can relate this. So there are, there are two things by uh, Andreas Abel and, and co-authors, like the two arrows from the typed uh, system going either right, so showing decidability um, by relating it to a non-typed or to a typed presentations. And these two things are very nice because uh, they, they are able to handle etalos, but the issue is that the proof technique is used is based on, on logical relations and these require a very strong meta theory. Usually it's like some form of uh, induction recursion or something like this. And uh, the issue is that the thing I want to look at and I'm interested in is kind of this uh, lower uh, um, arrow, the one on Metacock. And Metacock is this, uh, an extremely strong system, and especially it has this impredicative propositions that do not fit nicely in the, um, uh, in the, in the um, um, logical relation uh, system. And on the other hand, there are other works, especially those in Metacock, that again prove these kind of equivalences, but um, they are not able to handle etalos because they're working with this uh, lower left corner, the uh, untyped declarative here, and this one, I think we don't have a good story for etalos there at all. Well, here, things are reasonable for eta, but so the problem is that now we cannot really specify what eta does in Metacog here because the story is blurry. And uh, the question I want to look at is whether we can kind of factorize the problem by looking at this, uh, this right column. So, Basically, not tra uh, tackling the, the a diagonal in one go, but like looking at what's happening here first, and then hopefully doing this this uh, higher um, uh, dimension afterwards. And the question is whether we can do this, and hopefully whether we can do this with kind of a, a low uh, logical power and keeping the the powerful logical relation for the theoretical study on the in the in the upper row. So that's kind of the thing I, I want to look at. Uh, and actually, we can, we can do this. At least uh, I've been doing this on, on uh, simple systems, and I hope it scales. And I'm going to tell a bit of the, the story there. So um, the, the thing uh, I w uh, I'm, I'm taking inspiration from is so this, this work by uh, Andreas Abel and, and others on, on 2019, in 2018, 
showing the solubility of type checking in, uh, in ACTA. And this is done by having the, so this algorithmic notion of conversion. And actually, what you can do is kind of put the bidirectional lenses on and look at it with this, this notion of what is an input, what is an output. And if you do that, you quickly realize that you have these actually two relations. Uh, wait, sorry. This, this, one, uh, this one there, which is used to compare, this is kind of the algorithmic notion of conversion, the generic one. And this one takes a type as an input. And then you have another relation, which is this one, which is the one used to compare neutral specifically. And this one needs to uh, output a type rather than inputs. And so the idea is that this, this conversion uh, here is in kind of a checking mode, while this one is kind of in an inference mode, if you, if you say. And the, the reason why we need the type as input is for the last rule here. You see, when you're comparing two functions, you don't look at what the functions are, you just eta expand them uh, right away, and this is redirected by the type. Um, and on the other hand, you have these, uh, you, can, you can design the untyped conversion, that's what I've been, I've been doing, which kind of follows the same general structure. You also have a uh, separation between conversion and a neutral comparison um, that's, that's kind of uh, set as a, as a subroutine somehow. And the main difference is now you can't use the types as, as your input because you're not maintaining them. So instead, you have to have some form of uh, term-directed rules. And uh, you can do that, actually, and that that's, uh, all dates back to, to work of, of Thierry Cocon. Uh, that shows that actually you can have rules that just look at one of the two sides and say, ah, if I have a lambda, then I can eta expand the thing that's uh, compared with a lambda. And if I have two lambdas, I can just use a congruence rule that's uh, as, as good as, uh, as using eta expansion. Uh, and so once you've, you've set this down, then of course you want to prove that these two things are equivalent. And there, basically, you can do the proof in, in kind of two steps. The first one is to leverage this bidirectional structure. So uh, we've seen this this morning in the talk on type OS, this kind of discipline that you can have in bidirectional typing, whether things are inputs and outputs, uh, I've, I've called uh, MagWrite's discipline. Um, and so, um, this, this says that you have this kind of flow of information in your rule, and actually you can, you can look at the, at the rules uh, in, the, in a, a 2018 paper, uh, and you can see this flow of information that is respected there. So you have actually well-behaved rule in the, from the, the bidirectional point of view. Um, and so the idea is that now you want to, to show that this is actually the case, and for this uh, you need to show that these invariants are respected, and then you need all the meta theory of your, of your uh, tight variant. So that's where you use subject reduction, stability by substitution, transitivity, and all the, the strong meta-theoretical properties. So that's kind of the hard step, the one where you need a lot of, of things. And once you've done that and you've shown that these invariants are respected, then you can move to step two, which is basically relating the rules that are different in the two system. And then it's really easy, because now that you know that everything is well-typed everywhere, uh, you can just reason on, on weekend normal forms, basically, of product types. You know that this will be lambdas. And, and, and you're happy, basically. And then you can show, using this, that actually the two relations are equivalent by uh, kind of taking as black box the meta theory of the, of the typed variant, but not having to do any uh, fancy like logical relation or anything. And so this is kind of work in progress. Uh, I've, I've kind of uh, worked that out on paper for a simple pa uh, system of like uh, lambda and products. If you want to look at this, you can, you can go look at my thesis that's just out. Uh, and the question is, of course, whether now we can make all of this scale all the way to Pickwick, which is my end goal, because that's kind of the, the systems that we have uh, in Metacoc, and of course, that's a thing that I, I want to look at. And thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, questions? Questions, questions to Maven? I didn't see your finger, by the way. So for the untyped conversion, you also have this um, two modes, bidirectional, or? Um so uh, you, you still keep the two relations, but then, so um, you still have the two modes. You don't see them in the relation itself because you don't carry the type around, so you don't uh, ask whether the type is, is an input or an output. But it's still important to, uh, to, to think about this 
because when you, you, you want to prove that the, type, the typing is preserved in all your rules, then you see that thing appearing again. So basically you know that your terms are well typed and then you can carry that information. So it's kind of implicit in a way in your, in your relation, but it's important that you still kind of have these bidirectional ideas around. So could you go back to the slide with uh, untyped ETA? Yes. Yeah, this one. So in Coq, uh, when we do this this uh, ETA expansion, the N yeah. is uh, not necessarily a, a real neutral, and in, in that I mean uh, it may be a definition which has a, a body. Yes. Is that an important dis distinction? Um, I don't think it is. So the, the thing is that actually, um, what happens if you eta expand something that turns out not to be a real neutral? I mean, there are two possibilities for something at a function type. Either it's a neutral or it's a lambda abstraction. And if you happen to eta expand a lambda abstraction, then you can just do a beta step and you'll end up with the body of the abstraction. So the, the eta expanded a lambda abstraction is not that much of, a, of an issue. The problem is more that here you need the information from the lambda to know that you, can, you have the right in a way to expand the neutral. But uh, that's the important part is that we have a lambda here, not that much that this thing is neutral, in a way. So a defined constant is also a neutral, you're saying? Uh, so what happens in, in Coq actually is that we, we have this interleaving of uh, weekend normalization and then uh, uh, e either trying to apply congruence or, or these kind of rules. Um, and for the purpose of this weekend normalization, defined constants are considered as, as neutrals so that you don't unfold things that you don't need to unfold. And then if you, if you happen to kind of not uh, find a, a conversion that way, then you kind of backtrack and then you unfold the constant and start again. So that's kind of a way that you don't unfold of your constants unnecessarily all the time. Okay, other questions? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I've known uh, about some people working on um, on optimized conversion algorithm for uh, the Coq proof assistant. Yeah. Um, like with parallel reduction and all yeah. kind of crazy thing. Uh, are you looking uh, at that kind of stuff? So I don't, so I know that, that they exist. I haven't really looked at what they're doing yet, but that's definitely something to look at. And I think here, so I have the feeling that they're doing something a bit different, that they're in, interested more in the proof engineering way of like sharing computation and sharing reduction which is a bit different somehow than what I'm doing here, which is a bit more type theoretic in a way. And like, I think there are the, the, the both sides are important, but I think they're not exactly the same, the same question of optimization, but that's definitely relevant, yes. Thanks. Okay, other questions? Further questions to Maven? Oh, it's not a question, it's just to mention that Maven will depend on Oh, on yes. Friday afternoon, so right. if you want to know more, you can, right, right, and right. you're still there. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's not here, it's in yeah. a, another building, so all, all the things are on the, the types uh, Zulip, so you, including the, the, the building, so you should able to be able to find it, and otherwise I'll probably try to guide people from here to there, so yeah. And that's on Friday afternoon at 2. So, any other questions after this? Small advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> As, I mean, one of the main motivations to have type conversions was this uh, very uh, mundane thing, the, the unit type, like yeah. the empty record, where, where the terms don't give you any yeah. hint on what it is. I mean, and um, <coughs> I suppose this technique will not scale exactly. to you. So I, I, I hope we can uh, scale it to uh, other ETA laws for uh, records, non-empty records, like exactly those where you don't have the problem with, with units. So if we can also have a good story for uh, strict propositions, because in, in Coq we can have strict propositions by maintaining some sort of marks on the variables, and that's enough to like keep some trace of the typing information that's not too costly but that's enough to, to be able to trigger all the, the strict proposition rules you need. But indeed for the unit type, you need the full typing information and there, I mean, you can't go around it. One possibility that you could do if you really wanted to have a unit type in such a non-type system 
would be to kind of re-infer the time. Like if everything else fails, here you could say, yeah, okay, I'll try to infer type and maybe it's the unit, but I think that's a bad idea. That's very not good performance wise. So, I mean, that's the price that you have to pay. Like if you have uh, this, this more efficient algorithm, I think the unit time is just out of reach. But you can still have a strict yeah. proposition true, so. Okay, let's stop with that. If all else fails, you compute a type. So that's, that's <laughs> a good message. Thank you very much, man. <laughs>